Hey guys, today I will introduce you to separable differential equations or sometimes you might come across separation of, of variables, it's precisely the same thing. Say you have been given something like this, dy dx equals y squared over x squared. So on the right side basically you have a kind of a mixture of variables. You, uh, you have y and x kind of together so we are going to basically separate the variables and all you do you want to just get your y's on the one side of your equation and your x's x terms if you will on the other side of your equation so basically no matter what side also you need to get dy next to your y terms and you need to get your dx next to your x term. So let's do it. For these particular problems, all you do, so you want to get your y squared term, let's say on the left side of your equation. In order to achieve this, you want to do the opposite basically. So you want to multiply by both sides of both sides of your equation by 1 over y squared in order to clean it off, to clear it off on the right side. So 1 over 1 y squared. So you always want to do the opposite. So on the left side, you would be left, so what with that expression. So it's going to be 1 over y squared times dy dx and on the right side so y squared and y squared basically what we wanted so y squared term goes away disappeared and you would be left with 1 over x squared now we are not done yet at this point and we also want to bring dx to the right side so at this point in at this point in order to get this to achieve this you want to multiply both sides of your equation by dx since basically here you are given one over dx and again you want to do the opposite so you want to undo this so you multiply by dx both sides of your equation so you multiply by dx so on the left side dx goes away bye bye so you would be left with dy let me place it on top so you would be left with dy over y squared equals and on the right side so you are left with dx again let me put it on top place it on top over x squared now look at this on the left side you have dy and you have y terms so they are not mixed with x on the right side you have dx and you have x x term so you have x squared or you could have whatever you are given anyway we did separated variables so hopefully you are getting the grasp of it so on the left side again you have dy and, and y terms on the right side you have your x terms including dx so if you look at the original equation so we have as i mentioned before kind of concoction we have kind of a mixture y and x terms together so uh, together so the idea is you want to you want you want to split it up somehow you want to break it down you want to separate it using the algebra break it down with algebra use your basic algebra skills in order to get something like this and at this point we are ready to integrate it so we can integrate it and get the general solution to your differential equation so you would integrate it normally as you would solve basic differential equation so you take the indefinite integral and since you are given this power and your power happens to be in the bottom of your fraction so you always want to bring it up and let me do it over here so you would have something like the integral y to the negative 2 with respect to y dy and the same thing you're going to bring this power up to the top by making its negative negative 2 dx 
And at this point, you are going to apply a power rule to both sides of your equation. So recall that the power rule says, says all you do is just raise your power by one. So you increase it by one and you divide it by this new power. So minus two plus one. So you would be left with negative one and you need to divide it by negative one. So basically at this point you need to add the arbitrary constant of integration, let's say C1. But later on I will show you that basically you don't have to do this, but let's do it for now. And the same thing you would get on the right side. So all you do is just raise this power by one and you divide it by this new power. So minus two plus one. So you would be left with negative one and you divide it by this new power negative one. And also, let's say formally, you need to add this arbitrary constant of integration. Let's call it C2. Now, let's clean up this house so we don't want to leave this house like that house looks dirty so what i'm going to do i'm going to pull this negative in front of your term so it becomes negative overall and i'm going to put this y back i'm going to put it on the bottom and it becomes negative one over y equals let me skip this C at, at this point uh, for now and i'm going to do the same thing to the right side because basically you are given the uh, similar expression, just y and x, the difference. So I'm going to pull out this negative in front, don't forget that it's important, and I'm going to place this x back to the bottom by making it positive. And now, as I mentioned before, basically, basically, what we are going to do, we can move this constant c1 to the right side, because we don't want to carry on these two constants of on the both sides of your equation it looks bulky and basically um, it doesn't matter so what i'm going to do i'm going to move this c1 to the right side by subtracting c1 and since both of these constants they're just arbitrary constants of integration so basically you could write just c on one side of your equation it's more than enough so again at this point as i mentioned before basically even at this point you don't have to write this c1 and c2 so you could normally you could basically skip this c1 at this line at this point and you could add c over here so but you have to add c at at, at any point no matter to, we, to which side and again why it doesn't matter because if you add c to both sides of your equation equation eventually when you move this constant around it would end up to getting just one constant of integration and you could end up getting just c on one side now we are not done yet at this point and you always want to try to get your general solu solution in the form of y equals some x expression in terms of x so you want to you always want to express your y and write your y explicitly in terms of x sometimes it's not possible and you would end up getting some kind of kind of implicit form of your equation so but try now at this point let's multiply both sides of your equation by negative one in order to get rid of this negative sign so i'm going to multiply by negative one but both sides of your equation so it becomes in the next line of your work it becomes positive one over y so you do this algebra equals 1 over x so becomes positive minus c now i'm going to get the common denominator and i'm going to simplify this right side of your equation so 1 over y equals so the common denominator is going to be x and on top you end up getting 1 minus c x and at this point, I'm going to swap top and, top and bottom on the right side and simultaneously on the left side. So, you would get something like y equals x over 1 minus cx. 
where C is your arbitrary constant of integration. So that's your general solution to this differential equation. And it's look, it looks more compact, more neat than it was like at this point. So we did, we wrote Y explicitly in terms of X. And C kind of sticks to X and it's totally fine. And always keep in mind that C takes on any real value. And that's kind of a neat, compact, kind of a beautiful <laughs> answer for this one. Sometimes, as I mentioned before, it's not always possible to write Y explicitly in terms of X and you would you you might end up getting Y squared or square root of Y or something like more bulky, more complicated, more scary looking. Anyway. I hope it has been helpful to you. Huge thanks for watching and sharing your brain. I know everyone hates my mess, but if you like my video, please hit this like, share with your friends, leave the comments down below, and be sure to smash that subscribe button if you haven't, so you will not miss out my new 